What's up guys, I'm Jonathan, Duke does Amazon, and today we are going over the basics of reverse sourcing. And reverse sourcing is a technique commonly used by Amazon online arbitrage sellers where you look at other competitive sellers storefronts and the products they're selling, which in turn basically turns into profitable leads. And so what we're gonna do is A, go over the concept, the theory, why it works, then I'm gonna take you to my computer so you can see it firsthand. And lastly, I'm going to help you filter out so you can find storefronts of qualified sellers. Alrighty, so first up, what is reverse sourcing? Why do you do it? Why does it work? The theory, the concept behind it, right? So if you're not familiar, when you go to any listing on amazon.com, literally any of them, you can access every single seller that is currently selling that product, not just the seller that's currently winning the buy box. From there, you can access every single seller's storefront. A storefront is a term that's referred to as a seller's catalog. Basically, every single item that a seller is selling on Amazon, you can access as long as you can find that seller. All right, so now it becomes why does that matter? It matters because if you find qualified, good other sellers, they've kind of already done a lot of the work for you. They've found good selling products on Amazon, presumably, right? We're assuming that if we find good sellers, they know what they're doing. Now keep in mind, we can't control what their profit goals are, what their budget is, if they have special discounts going on behind closed doors, a family connection, if they're selling things for a loss, we don't know but it's a great starting spot because this person, if they're selling profitable items, they've already done the legwork for you and now you just have to go find those products and see if you can get them at a price that is profitable for your goals and you have to confirm they are in fact selling. So in a nutshell, it's a great starting spot and it's basically a built-in leads list from other qualified Amazon sellers. All right, so just to give you a walkthrough on my computer, what I'm gonna do is I'm here on amazon.com. So again, not Amazon seller. I'm looking at this from the eyes of a customer. I am just going to type in a product, Starbucks Vanilla K-Cup, all right? And so now it's just gonna give me a list of everything that registers with those keywords, right? And so what I'm gonna do is just click on this three pack here, okay? And so, again, I'm looking at this from the eyes of a customer. And so right here, ships from Amazon on the right side of the page, I'm highlighting it, this is the buy box. So the current winner of the buy box, ships from Amazon, sold by YDS, right here, okay? And so that third party seller, and I know it's a third party seller because if it was sold by Amazon, that means they would be selling it directly. So YDS is winning the buy box third party seller. That's great. But if you scroll down a little bit further, here's the key. This section right here, see where it says new and it has in parentheses 13 from thir the price and free shipping. This little box here, you click on that and you'll see what appears is every other seller selling this product. So CPGIO, Laurel Canyon, uh, Ocean Breeze, From Us To You, Wholesale AZ, etc. And so from here, I'm just gonna pick a random one. You're gonna see Ocean Breeze Marketplace, okay? For one, you can see their rating, how many stars out of five. And for two, you can see their total number of ratings as well. And if I click on their name, it's linkable. So Ocean Breeze Marketplace. Under that, it says visit the Ocean Breeze Marketplace storefront. That's where we wanna go, okay? And now, we see every single product that this person is selling, okay? So different Starbucks, grocery, stuff of that nature, all right? And there's pages of them, right? All the way up to six. So we can see everything they're selling. While here, we can go item by item, just down the list, or we can even type in, let's just say we decided we only wanna focus on Starbucks sourcing. Yeah, I can filter them out, type in it up here, Starbucks, and it'll show me everything that this person is selling in their catalog that is Starbucks, okay? So let's say I have a really good uh, business selling Starbucks. This would be a great place for me to look, okay? 
So now what I want to do is just show you something that I'm going to come talk to in a second. So here we are back on the uh, page where it has all of the sellers. Okay. I, I just want you to take note of this because I'm going to, you might say, well, how do I know which ones to click on? I don't want to, you don't want to waste your time clicking on all of them because some of them will have no application or value to you or at least minimal. Right. And so we're going to talk about the filters I go through before I sign off of here. I just want you to notice this person here has 73,000. 350 ratings. Okay. That's one of the largest amounts I've ever seen, to be honest, this person, 2000. And then this person has 326. This person has 234. Okay. So there's a huge difference. And we're going to talk about that in a second, but I just wanted to make sure to point out to you, make sure that you know where to find the amount of ratings and what their ratings are. So we know what reverse sourcing is. We have a glimpse from the computer. It comes down to filtering out the proper sellers and products to reverse engineer us to those sellers, right? So let's start off with the products, which ones to look up. First, I'm going to talk to people that have already had selling experience, and then I'll talk about ones that are brand new. So if you have selling experience, all of us have a couple products that are like gold mines, you know, maybe they're not the best sales rank in the world. Maybe they're in the hundred thousand, 150,000 range. They sell 40 times a month. There's never any competition. They're consistent, profitable, easy to replenish type of thing, right? Maybe one or two other sellers. I would start with those products because you've already filtered it out the first level that this is a good selling product. This is a good listing. Not everybody knows about it. So if another seller is on that listing, it already proves that they know what they're doing, right? Cause you've already validated it. You know, it's a tough listing to find you know, it's a good seller. And these few other sellers have also found it right. And they're not taking the price. And, and then, so it's a great starting spot. So that's where I would start. So any product that you've already sold with a good proven track record, that would be a great starting spot to find other like-minded sellers. Okay. If you're brand, brand new to Amazon, I would say you're going to just kind of be throwing darts against the wall, hoping something stick. Okay but naturally you want to start with categories that you're ungated in, maybe brands that you're ungated in. So let's just say you are allowed to sell grocery. I would start with whatever coffee company, K cup coffee company, two pack, right? Coffee company, three pack, whatever it is, start there. You're kind of just starting, you know, with knowing what you don't know and then just go from there, right? It is going to be tougher. If you don't have a proven track record, you don't know where to start but it really doesn't matter. Start where you're allowed to sell and just, it's going to lead you down a rabbit hole and a spider web, one thing after another. All right. So that's how to filter out what to search for. And then when you get to those products, what should you be looking for to filter out the sellers? The number one component I look at when filtering out which sellers storefronts to look at is number of reviews. And so let me explain that. I'm trying to compare myself to like-minded, similar style, maybe not like-minded, similar style sellers. Meaning I do online arbitrage. I want to compare myself to apples to apples, someone else doing online arbitrage at relatively similar scale. This way, if somebody has 20,000 reviews and I only have 150 right now, which is accurate, I know that that person's probably doing wholesale. They're not even in the same room as me. Although we're both selling on Amazon, they're doing a volume game. I'm not buying things at their price point. It's probably a waste of my time. On the flip side, if somebody only has 10 reviews, they're brand, brand new to Amazon, or at least much younger than me, they might not really know what they're doing. Just scratching the surface. I'm not trying to discredit them, but in an ideal world, I have 150 reviews. As I mentioned, I would find somebody with between hundred and like three to 500. Okay. That lets me know that they are probably doing online and or retail arbitrage, not wholesale similar enough that that is a good starting spot. Okay. So it's just a way to go apples to apples. And that's why I look at reviews as the best filter possible. Another thing is you don't want somebody with a horrible rating. Cause that doesn't, that might mean they don't know what they're doing. I don't see that too often. Number one thing is I'm looking at number of reviews and then you just go through item by item by item in their storefront. You can kind of get a quick feel for if they know what they're doing or not, or if it's going to be a good match or not. If it is go deep, if not 
keep it moving. I want to make a note as well that you don't know what somebody else's profit goals are, what their return on investment requirements are, how much capital they have. Um, and so I say that to say, if there's things that you're looking up in someone's storefront and it makes no sense to you, it might make sense to them. Or they might actually just be losing money and not good at this, right? Or it's just the thing that's changed because of supply and demand. I guess what I'm getting at is you'll never know 100% their situation, their story. You do the best you can by filtering out good sellers. You go product by product. And there's very, very good chance you're going to find at least a couple winning products. And what happens is now it might take you down a new brand, a new category, a new thought process, a new store that you've never thought of before. And then from there, you look up other sellers who are selling those brands, those packs, those items. You know what I mean? And it just creates this spider web effect. So it's a great starting spot, but don't give any seller individually too much credit or discredit them. You don't know the full picture. It's just a great starting spot. So in a nutshell, whether you are new to Amazon and just want a starting spot for online arbitrage, if you're an experienced online arbitrage seller, reverse sourcing is a great starting spot. I've primarily focused on online arbitrage heavily the last three months, like 90% of my business to about 10% retail arbitrage. And it's really, really helped scale my business in, in addition to manual sourcing and other techniques. But reverse sourcing is a very, very actionable, easy way to get the ball rolling if you don't know where to begin or if you just want to continue scaling your business. I'm Jonathan. Duke does Amazon. We're on Instagram as well. Questions, comments, topics, put them below. I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for being here.